Anyone? Oh, yes, that gentleman in the second row, handing, they're holding his hand up. There we go. Hi there. Um, you told us what, what some of your uh, secret uh, desires might have been that you never accomplished. Um, in the spirit of the arts, what were the jobs that your parents wanted you to take instead of the jobs? <laughs> I think we have our next moderator. Sorry. Uh, that, was, that was intense. You want to just go this way? Or Kendra, how about you? Do you want to start? Yeah, Kendra. Did your parents, did your parents uh, raise you to be a viola and violin repair person? Literally all of my family's in the medical field. Mm -hmm. And so are you. Right, scroll and peg box. We all know what that means. Sure we do. No, they're all like doctors or lab techs or in biomedical engineers or nurses or some shit. <laughs> and did they want you to do the same thing? No, I'm the, uh, the, the louse, is that correct term? Well, Not really, know. but sure. Oh, I don't know. I want, you, I want you to know I take you seriously as a person and it is oh, also very cute to see you speak these words while wearing a cloud. <laughs> Every every costume has its ritual. We don't know what they are. <laughs> the next person is going to come up. Is going to have. Uh, 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 some... Are you not a cloud? No, she's I definitely am, a cloud. I'm a specific cloud. I'm the glow cloud. The glow? Oh man, fuck you. you know what I mean? I am a, the president of the Night Vale School Board. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Did your parents want you to become a medical professional? Yes or no? No. No. And how did you become a violin and viola repair person? And why do you hate cellos and double basses? I don't hate them. There are just fewer of them. I'm a bass player by nature. Oh. So. Or was it nurture? It, Funny. It was. It's a funny thing to say. I liked it. Funny joke. It was nature because I was too lazy to want to bring it to school every day. <clears throat> All right. T t tiny, tiny instrument. My brother uh, played uh, the piccolo because he didn't want to carry it to, to school, mm -hmm. and then he traded to the tuba because all he had to do was carry the mouthpiece. Oh. I gave him two tubas, one for the house, one for the school. Same, same with bases. Jackie, yeah. I want to hear what your family wanted you to do. Uh, my father wanted me to uh, be the head of a small island. He wanted me to be uh, uh, a monarch. So my father's a monarchist. And uh, a lot of people don't know this about Elliot Cation. He is, uh, he's, he's a big fan of... Uh, of um, uh, solo, he's, he's, uh, he used to say when I was a kid, um, dictatorships keep people busy. <laughs> he is sadly not wrong. 85% of the time my father is correct. And the other 15%, he's handed you a monkey's paw. Uh, so, but, uh, the, uh, yeah, so he wanted us all to, uh, essentially, um, be benevolent dictators, uh, abusive dictators, or um, he just wanted us. He, he was like, "You're gonna want to be a whole power. societies or of, single families of all societies, oh. single families." He couldn't even be. In my childhood, he was a lot like radiation. We never saw him, but he affected all of our lives. <laughs> like dark. What is this morning radio? That was so seamlessly. <laughs> This isn't my first panel, you guys. These bits, <laughs> these bits are getting woven into a beautiful tapestry. I don't have actual conversation. No, I love it. I only work bits into conversation. Wait, can I ask her dad wanted her to be a bit weaver from way back there. That's the next Patrick Rothfuss uh, novel, by the way. <laughs> Name of the bit weaver. John, what about you? Uh, I was an only child. It's still am. Uh, <laughs> You know, my parents indulged my artistic side. My father took me aside at one point before I went to college and said, all I ask is that you take one course in bookkeeping. And I said, 
I'm never going to do that. <laughs> and I didn't. <laughs> it's like a backup. And all I did was read Gabriel Garcia Marquez all through college, and then I showed up uh, in New York with a degree in uh, literary theory, because literature was too practical. <laughs> totally sc squandered every penny of my parents' money. Um, but they were very, they were very, they never really, they never pressured me to do one thing or another, and as it happens, I never did. Cameron? Cameron? Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, my, my dad for sure wanted me to be a lawyer, um, because he said I was very good at arguing with him about things, mm -hmm. and then I was supposed to take over his practice, be a lawyer, we'd be lawyers together, oh. classic law team, Aww. um, but I didn't become that, and then my older sister did become a lawyer, oh, wow. uh, but he doesn't care about that. <laughs> you know sometimes your parents don't care if you're the one that does the thing that the other one's supposed to do? And then I was just a stand-up comic. Um, first of all, you'd be an amazing lawyer. I mean, I agree. Right. That's why you argue against it. Brains. <laughs> It, may, may I tell a story about why I'm so glad I'm an only child? Yes. It's a very short story about siblings. So our, our neighbor is a documentary filmmaker in New York City. And he has a brother and a sister. And his mom and his dad and his brother and his sister all went into wealth management and he became a documentary filmmaker. They formed a wealth management firm in New York City called father, mother, sister, brother. <laughs> and they did not invite him to be part of it. <laughs> they made bazillions of dollars. And then one day, his brother called him up and said, you direct documentary films, right? And, and, uh, and our, and our uh, neighbor said yes. And his brother goes, do you ever hear of a, a house called Grey Gardens? Oh, no. And he's like, yes, I have. There's a very famous documentary made about this house. He goes, yeah, I just rented it for five years. <laughs> the worst thing. No one here knows Great Gardens, honestly. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. Like, can you imagine if you were a documentary filmmaker and your brother who had all the money in the world said, yeah, I just rented this house for five years. Oh my God. I mean, yeah, because... It's like a thing that a brother would do to a, another brother. Like, well, I, I am very... Sorry I, this didn't pay off for you guys. No. Like, <laughs> Jesus. I will say, I'm sure being an only child has its perks. I like having siblings. Yeah. But this was... It's less about my sibling in this case right. and more about my dad... You know, I'm raised from, in this really Italian Catholic family where like machismo was really validated. And then I have three sisters and my mom is from all women. And everybody's women except then when I was a kid, I was like super butch. And my dad loved playing sports with me and liked my sort of personality. And then when I then later was like, there were no signs when I came out to him, which was hilarious because it was it literally like... The whole thing was signs, you know? You were made of signs. It was the movie Signs, and there were tons of signs. There could not have been more signs. I, like, never wore a bikini top. I only wore, like, a Speedo to the beach and just, like, dug in the sand by myself. Collected only Kens. Just a classic straight woman. Um, but I think what my dad really liked about me was that I was, like, a little gay kid. And so he was like, this is who will, who will, like, this is a butch enough woman to be a lawyer. And then my older sister, who's a ballerina, she was the one who became the lawyer. Ha ha! Fuck you, society! You know? <laughs> Michael? Uh, <laughs> literally the same. Well, I proclaimed to my parents' divorce when I was quite young, and I proclaimed to, uh, I guess, both of them when I was nine exactly what I would be doing for a living, uh, which is that I was going to be an actor. And they, I think there was just a general sense of, well, we'll humor him uh, until he decides for real what he's going to do. And then I just, I just kept doing it. Uh, but now that I have children of my own, uh, the only reason I bring up my own children is because my son is here and he's 17 years old today. Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Happy birthday! 
And wouldn't it be great if everybody sang happy birthday to my son? He is right up there. His name is Elijah. And, and he's standing close to you. Happy birthday. to become a dentist. <laughs> it's funny, you know, my dad once said, uh, he said, you might as well do whatever you want to do because I'm going to make fun of you either way. He literally was like, why well, you should try and do the thing you want to do because I'm going to make fun of you if uh, you don't try. And if you try to do the thing you did and then you succeed, I'm going to make fun of you because you're going to think you're a big shot. And, uh, and then, But if you try and you fail, I'm going to be like, well, you tried. I guess you fucked up. Keep trying. And he's literally, I mean, my father is one of the most carelessly non-thoughtful, supportive men in the world. <laughs> Keeping you humble. And, uh, well, yeah. I mean, somebody asked me once if I had that imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. And I was like, no, I was raised to be an imposter. <laughs> so I don't, whenever anyone says, you're not qualified to do that, I'm like, I'm not qualified to do anything. <laughs> I will do whatever you get put in front of me. You were me. raised in captivity to be an imposter. You have <laughs> imposter syndrome via Stockholm syndrome. Yeah. <laughs>